Hey all, I'm Adarsh Rai. I'm over here to present this wonderful series in front of you, Master the Topic. So here I am again and this very beautiful question in front of you people. How do you decode the motion of boats in river? So the question seems pretty simple, but there are many and many cases present in it. This is basically a very standard case while learning relative motion. Relative motion in 2D, all the concepts regarding it can be understood by just analyzing all the possibilities of riverman cases. For a brief thing, I just want to tell you these many concepts we are going to cover in this entire lecture. We'll be talking about motion in two dimension. We'll be using equations of motion. We'll be doing vector analysis as well. Then we'll be observing things from different frame of references. So there will be an element of frame of reference as well. Then finally with the use of relative motion and its concept, we'll be finally in a state wherein we have understood all the possibilities of river man. Okay. So to begin with, First, we'll consider the cases wherein the motion of boats are occurring along the river flow that is parallel to its direction and anti-parallel to its direction. So the first one that is the downstream motion, what happens in this is that the motion of boat is actually along the direction of river flow. Okay, so what I need to consider, let's say the velocity of boat with respect to river is plus v. Plus because we have considered the forward direction to be positive and boat with respect to river means basically when you encounter any question or any example, any case study, you'll be getting the thing as the velocity of boat in still water or the velocity of boat in uh, water at rest. So this thing is basically that the velocity of boat with respect to reverse frame means the velocity of boat in still water. Okay. And that we are considering to be plus V. Now, river is also flowing in forward direction, so we can consider velocity of river with respect to ground. Let that be plus u. Now, what I'll be doing, I'll be standing on ground and observing this boat. So, basically, all I am interested in is the velocity of boat which is from ground's frame with my frame and I am standing on ground. So, what I need to do, I need to introduce a river frame in between. And this thing will turn out to be velocity of boat with respect to river plus velocity of river with respect to ground with a vector annotation. So as you can see, both these vectors are in forward direction. Velocity of boat with respect to river is also in forward direction and velocity of river with respect to ground is also in forward direction. So I can easily state that during downstream motion, the actual speed of the boat, which will appear to me, will actually be V plus U. Okay, now let's consider the other case. The other case is basically when the boat is having a motion opposite to the direction of reverse flow and that motion is basically known as upstream motion. So the same case applies over here as well. If you are considering the velocity of boat with respect to river, in this case it will be minus v and velocity of river with respect to ground, in this case it will be plus u. So all I am interested in the velocity of boat from ground frame introduce the river frame in between it will turn out to be velocity of boat with respect to river plus velocity of river with respect to ground just add those as they add vectorically so basically over here v is in this direction and u is in this direction so depending upon the magnitude whether v is greater or u is greater the boat will have its motion suppose if v is greater than u then boat will move in forward direction as is the case over here so these two concepts are basically covering all those aspects when boat's motion is along the river flow that is parallel to it and opposite to it. Now what we are going to consider, we are going to consider the cases wherein boat is moving across the river. That means the boat's velocity is making an angle with river flow. So for that, what is the normal strategy? How to basically deal with these questions? These types only create a lot of trouble among students. Okay, so let's consider this case that river is flowing in forward direction and uh, boat wants to reach the opposite side. Okay, and it has a velocity like this, making an angle with river flow. Okay, so what will be my strategy over here? 
the strategy remains same the analysis remains same i am standing on ground and i'll be observing the motion of this boat so all i am concentrated in is velocity of boat with respect to ground i'll introduce the river frame again so it will turn out to velocity of boat with respect to river plus velocity of river with respect to ground that is the vector addition of both these vectors so basically this vector will be velocity of boat with respect to river and this vector is basically velocity of river with respect to ground so i just need to add these two vectors and finally i can achieve at my result i can know to me standing on ground in which direction this boat will heat so there are two methods one conventional method where we can use triangle law of addition or parallelogram law of addition and finally come to a result and one is a very advanced or not an advanced one but a very easier one wherein what i'll be doing is i'll be breaking the components of boat's velocity into two segments okay one will be perpendicular to the river flow and other will be along the river flow so suppose now the velocity of boat with respect to river is making angle theta with the vertical then here comes my vertical component vbr cos theta and here comes my horizontal component vbr sin theta so why i have done that basically because i wanted to segment the velocity of boat into two stratas okay the one side will actually be talking about the horizontal velocity of the boat and the other side will be talking about the vertical velocity of the boat so if you can look closely so the horizontal velocity of the boat will entirely be dependent upon the resultant of vrg and vbr sin theta and the vertical velocity of the boat will entirely be dependent upon the vertical component that is vbr cos theta so now i'll just pen them down so basically the horizontal component of velocity so let's say vrg is greater than that will amount to vrg minus vbr sin theta and what about the vertical component vertical component will be vbr cos theta and why i have segmented in these two formats because the boat is moving to the other end it can have a vertical displacement it can have a horizontal displacement as well so the horizontal displacement will entirely be depending upon this velocity this velocity will be responsible for the horizontal displacement of this boat and the vertical displacement of the boat will entirely be responsibility of vbr cos theta so now two case arises okay just keep these terms in your mind now two specific cases arises one case arise of the shortest time the first case is of the shortest time wherein i want to reach the opposite end on the other side in shortest amount of time okay no issues so what what the condition is over here that i want to cross this river i want to cross this distance d in shortest time so first of all what will be the value of my time so the value of my time i can write it to be distance upon speed as there is no element of acceleration in it so what was the vertical component of the boat's velocity because the vertical displacement will entirely be covered by the vertical component of velocity so what was the vertical component of velocity it was v b r cos of theta so this is any generalized time so i want to make this time the shortest one how can i do that how can i do that in one way i can do that i can reduce the value of d but am i that capable enough to reduce the width of the river no i am not other way i can increase my boat's velocity and let's say suppose the boat is actually running at its max capacity its velocity is actually the maximum value so can i increase it further no i cannot so the last scope where is that cos theta should become maximum for t for t to be minimum so what is the maximum value of cos theta so the maximum value of cos theta can be 1 and in that case theta needs to be zero and if theta is zero then the boat should not make an angle with the vertical it should actually be directed in the vertical direction only so basically basically what i mean to say for t to be shortest cos theta should be equal to 1 and that means theta should be equal to 0 degree and in such a case the boat's velocity vbr should entirely be focusing in the vertically upward direction and in 
if that case is happening then we can surely state that this is the shortest time possible this is the case of shortest time but there's an issue with shortest time what happens i started from this point but i finally reached this point so there comes an element of horizontal drift in it now what is horizontal drift basically so i started from this point so basically i can point it over here and finally i am reaching this point right so this point this distance is basically what is horizontal drift okay so i need to calculate this as well i need to calculate how much i am drifting horizontally so what is the calculation behind it so basically i know the time right i know the time after which i have reached this position so i just need to multiply that time with the horizontal component of my velocity presently the boat's velocity presently and that will actually give me the value of horizontal drift so it's pretty simple this is actually time into whatever is the horizontal velocity okay so what was the value of time time was equivalent to d upon vbr cos of theta and it is vrg now as i was talking about the shortest time so cos theta was equal to 1 so i'll just remove cos theta and here comes my answer here comes the minimum possible time taken and the horizontal displacement the horizontal drift which is occurring in such a case okay so this was basically about the horizontal drift which is occurring in shortest time span now let us consider a case wherein i don't want any horizontal drift i want that i started from this place and i want to reach the opposite end i'm not at all concentrated about or i'm not at all concerned about the time frame whatever be the time i'm not interested i just want to reach the opposite end then what can be the case over here what can be the possible case over here when i'm talking about no horizontal drift so in this case just now again focus your attention towards the vertical and horizontal velocities of the boat so basically the vertical displacement was covered by vbr cos theta and the horizontal displacement was covered by basically the resultant of vbr sin theta and vrg so now what i need is i need to reach this point that means i don't need a horizontal displacement so how can i avoid the situation wherein there is no horizontal displacement the only possibility is because there are velocities right i cannot reduce the velocities so there are velocities the only situation left with me is that if in case vrg becomes equal to vbr sin theta then there won't be any net horizontal velocity and in such a case I won't be making any horizontal displacement and the only speed left with me will be this vertical component and it will make me move over here so basically what the condition of no horizontal drift is that if vrg becomes equal to vbr sine of theta then no horizontal drift occurs okay now what in that case will be my angle the boat is heading towards with the vertical so angle can be found out easily you just need to find the angle using this equation so sine theta can be found to be vrg upon vbr through this equation you can easily find the value of theta and state at which angle with the vertical the boat should steer such that no horizontal drift condition arises so there is a limiting condition also in no horizontal drift what is the limiting condition over here so i want you all to focus towards the equation again the equation which was that sin theta is equal to vrg divided by vbr so you all know that sin theta can have a maximum value equal to 1 right so sin theta should always be less than or equal to 1 and in that case if such a situation arises then vrg upon vbr should also be less than equal to 1 and that means vrg should always be less than or equal to vbr so basically what i mean to say is if you are looking for the condition wherein there shouldn't be any horizontal drift then the boat's velocity should always be greater than reverse velocity 
So the next time when a person is asking you, say, hey, the boat's velocity is 5 kmph and river is flowing at 8 kmph. So what will be the possibility that I have no horizontal drift? So you should not focus your attention towards solving the case. Instead, you should be very clear in your mind that if boat's velocity is lesser than river's velocity, then the case of no horizontal drift can never arise. This case can only arise when river's velocity is actually lesser than boat's velocity. So this was an interesting question, right? But this is not all. You need to practice much more interesting questions. So what you need to do? Go in the description, find a link, download the Extra Marks Learning app. And what you can do, you can practice so many questions based on relative motion. So many questions there are on river man, rain man, airplane wind and many more. Practice them and then don't stop over there. Give tests. Tests are actually the mirror which reflect you at what stage you are. So create your own test, give trending tests, give score booster tests, as many as you can. So the, basically the standard model is learn the concepts, practice questions and give your test. In such a manner you will finally be in a state wherein you have aced all these topics. With this note, I am signing off. Thank you.